The reaction now in the closing bell exchange. Lee Munson from Portfolio Asset Management. Bill Nichols from Canna Fitzgerald. Gordon Charlock, CNBC Market Analyst from Rosenblatt Securities. And our own Rick Santelli. Gentlemen, good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Lee, let me kick this off with you. As a guy who's got to put money to work, allocate capital, what's your take on the latest uh, maneuverings out of Washington? Does this make you more bullish? Well, it does, but I'm, I'm really shocked. If I were a politician right now, red or, 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 or blue, I would not be doing anything other than saying we're not going to work it out until after Christmas. This kind of puts a, a shower on my parade because I was hoping, Maria, that we'd have just a little bit more volatility with the political announcements before Christmas. So I think if, if you have money that you need to work, you've got to put it in over the next couple of days. So I'm a little bummed they didn't keep uh, playing around for at least another week. <laughs> playing that volatility. Yeah, Gordon Charlop, why aren't we seeing a bigger rally today when it is becoming clearer that they are talking and making some uh, progress in the talks? Well, Bill, first off, it's been a somber trading day down here. I mean, a 9.15 moment of silence, uh, remembering what happened in Connecticut. And, I, and so I don't know. It, it seems to me maybe there's a, sort of a a muted sense that there's going to be a spirit of compromise up there in Washington now. So we've seen some rotational action. I mean, cyclicals are down, banks are up. So it seems like risk on seems to be in play. They're, they seem to anticipate that this is going to be resolved. And then the implications are if we don't have a Santa Claus rally, as we had talked about, right. that we'll see something in January because this last quarter has been sort of a wait and see kind of thing. And that would probably speak to, you know, a good quarter for us next next time around. You know, I wonder, I mean, I don't I don't know that anybody's happy with, oh, well, this is probably going to be a January affair and, oh, well, you know, we're not going to deal with this till after Christmas. Uh, did you see a change in money flows? Gordon, you're there on the floor watching real money uh, move uh, throughout sectors. Did you see any change uh, today or on Friday as, as people felt that maybe we are at the beginning of a deal or still people are sort of sitting on their hands and not wanting to uh, move money around. Well, getting yet. a little bit more active, Maria, but it's been rotational, which is something we haven't been seeing as much of. I mean, it's been more like rising tides, lifting all boats, but today we're seeing them pull out of one sector, going to the other sector's risk on. But you have to think that once we get done with whatever the outcome is going to be, fiscal cliff going to the end of the year, that we'll start to focus on Europe, we'll start to focus on Japan printing uh, money over there. So, you know, we'll get back into the macro uh, economic horizons and, and we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I think that there's been some outflows in certain sectors. Risk is on here. Right. Bill Nichols, how are you playing this waiting game right now? Well, I think one of the real interesting sectors, which uh, one of the other guests mentioned, is the uh, action in financials. So you look at Bank America, and you, know, you really haven't seen any real participation in the financial sector you know, in four, four or five years. So you know, that's one to keep an eye on, as opposed to just a little bit uh, of an uptick. You may see a real meaningful move, and if that's the case, you know, that could be a real help to the market. You, that's, contrast you, that with, you don't think it's which, too late? What's I mean, going to happen next year in terms of a tax increase? Bank of America is the best performing Dow component this year. It's not too late to get into that? You think there's more to come? Well, I think you look at that short-term move, and it sure looks good, but take a look at a four-, or five-, or six-year chart, and it's a very different story. So it looks like, yeah. you know, we've got a lot more room on the upside. Hmm. Rick Santelli, jump in here. What are you seeing in terms of uh, money moving into equities? Where are you seeing in Chicago the movement? Well, if you consider the big story of the year, mutual fund flows and how historic they've been in fixed income and how they've been lacking in equities, well, to me, the, the big story is, is that you have basically the last Fed meeting. It was somewhat hawkish. At least conventional wisdom dictates it was. And boom, you have six-week high yields in fives, tens, and thirties. But fives are still a dozen basis points away. They're lower, a dozen basis points lower than they finished last year. Same could be said for tens. 30-year bond is the only instrument that actually has a higher yield by several basis points versus the end of last year. Equities right. can't lose. I mean, consider, we're happy, stock market's happy of any deal, one-to-one -one revenues versus spending. Maybe it's a good compromise for the equities, but it certainly compromises the future from a fiscal stand standpoint. And you know what? It just shows all politicians are pretty much cut from the same cloth. Speaking of those higher yields, I'm going to ask you what I'm going to ask Mohammed Alarian in a few minutes. I'll show my hand early, Mohammed. Uh, do you think we've seen the lows uh, for the foreseeable future for the Treasuries here? In terms of I don't yield? think we're going to get. Oh, I'm sorry. 
No, you for you. Me, Bill? Rick, yeah, yeah, yeah I don't think we're going to necessarily see a 138 in the 10 anytime soon, but I think that we're going to spend a lot of time between a 150 and a 2%. So I think we're going to revisit lower yields after some of the selling gets out of the way, probably by February of next year. Which, that's why, Bill, it's not too late. Bill, it's not too late in the financials. And I think investors, there's so many people sitting there on cash. I have clients that are sitting on cash. you got to right. get in. And I think the next week or so, you do it. But so, why, why the financials now, Lee, if the Fed is going to keep yields at these historically low rates? It's tough to make a buck in the traditional banking business. So why buy these financials? because they're breaking out and that's what's going to lead the market even though the financials are overextended right now I agree with you and I understand the fundamentals but as money starts going into these broad based indexes and in January we start seeing the macro picture improve especially in Europe and Japan as they start printing money just the sheer force of cash going in the system just going in the S&P 500 that's 10 percent of it so they're going to rise just by being part of the market so you don't have to be a rocket scientist right now if there's ever a time the trends your friend I hate saying this I love being a contrarian but not now. It's on hold. All right. We'll leave it there. Thanks, everybody. Real appreciate your time tonight. Thanks, we'll see guys. you soon.